guys. I went live on the Other Side Vintages page yesterday about this and on Instagram. And I'm sitting here painting this, so I just thought real quick, I know it's a weird lighting situation because of the sun coming in just on part of this table. But as I'm sitting here painting, I know some of you had questions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to paint this first coat. I may not be able to see your comments, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get this on here. And you can watch while you're doing other things, or you can scroll <laughs> elsewhere. These wheels are not agreeing with me. I already put the uh, the paint on the top, as you can see. And what I'm doing now is getting this on the apron of this table that I'm going to recreate or repurpose for a desk. I was originally going to paint this white, but so many of you, because it has a seashell emblem set, go with a funky beach color. So we're going to use this color, which you can see part light, part there. The sun, okay, there's the sun helping. <laughs> the sun's going back. Um, this is mermaid tail. This piece has been cleaned and has been sanded lightly. And now I am just putting on that first layer of paint. I know it's hard to see because of the lighting. The lighting's horrible because when I first sat down, it's a cloudy day and um, it was perfect lighting, but now the sun is peeking through that cloud. It's partially lit and partially not. so. I'm aware of the horrible lighting situation. Bear with me. And I'm using the side of my brush like I talked on my live yesterday on the Other Side Vintages page that I'm using a lot of the side of this brush. There. I'm not just using the, the bristles, the tips. I'm using the side of the brush to paint just as much. This does have an inset. Normally I, I painted like this, but I did mush in there a little bit because it's going to be a different color. So I'm reverse faux painting. Um, if I had done white, I would not do that. I would just go this way and let this show up. And it, actually it is showing up really well. The inset color, I know it's hard to see right now because of the lighting situation. I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm letting the paint do what it wants to do. And then I'll incorporate my other colors that were suggested by my friend Callan. Um, to make this piece a really fun, beachy piece, considering the motif is a seashell right here. Again, I'm using the side of my brush to get these insets here at the bottom that's underneath. The reason you want to paint these is because across the room, you'll be able to see this. So you really want to make sure you, when you're painting a piece of furniture, you pay attention to what all is going to be seen. Yes, you wouldn't paint underneath here, because you're not gonna see underneath. But these little insets, I know it's hard again to see because of that. You wanna see that because across the room, you will see that, that cutout. So I'm just taking the side of my brush and getting some paint on there. This is water-based paint, so it's okay to paint. Easy to get off. You can paint in your house, with low VOC. There's absolutely no smell. There's no paint smell whatsoever right now. So it's easy for me to sit here and paint and not worry about the smells. And dripping, not really an issue. This paint doesn't really drip because it's a thicker consistency. It'll drip a little bit maybe, but I actually can paint indoors now, especially with this awful, awful heat we're having um, in Tallahassee. If you guys are wondering where I'm at, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida the capital of Florida. Tallahassee
Tallahassee proud, Tallahassee strong. By the way, I'm trying to get one of those t-shirts. I guess the city put out these t-shirts. Tallahassee proud, and I've been trying to get one. So if anyone knows, I think I asked Greg Tish and he said he might know. And my friend Bike Mike from Capital City Pedicabs has one and he said he got it at an event on by the city. So if anyone in town knows where I can get a Tallahassee proud shirt, I would love to be wearing it during this live right now. So, okay, I know I'm facing back towards you now. I had to turn around to paint this. Again, I apologize, but I was sitting here painting thinking I could be live and someone could just watch. This is not rocket science. <laughs> this is not what I considered artwork. I'm not an artist like Colette Originals or Jim Russell or Barbara Simmons. Yes, I'm naming off people I know. Um, some of them in Radford Square. It's just, you can do this. It is art in the sense that you're painting and painting is a form of art, but you do not have to be perfect. You do not have to know what you're doing. Paint is forgiving as far as painting furniture. You're just painting on something. You're not creating a face or fingers or such if you're doing a portrait painting. So this way, I have a nice anxiety release while creating something fun and colorful. Because let me tell you, my I have anxiety disorder with agoraphobia. Um, you can look that up, agoraphobia. <laughs> um, I won't go into details, but my anxiety has flared so bad in the last week as of everybody else is worried about COVID and such. So painting is my only like, <sighs> and I know that's weird, but I found painting furniture really, really helps my anxiety. It lets me focus on something else and I get to see what I did after I do all this work. As opposed to, as you've heard me before in my lives, I talked about, I got a really cool coloring book to paint for anxiety, which is great. And a color, and that does help. But at the end, I was like, what am I? Am I a five-year-old kid? I'm gonna frame it and put it on my refrigerator? I mean, it was a lot of work. <laughs> and it was a really neat, end product and I thought ah I'll paint furniture which I've been doing for a long time but I just re-emphasized paint more so I'm painting furniture and again if you don't like this color choice it's okay I paint hundreds and hundreds of pieces most of them most of them white neutral see how that popped here most of them white neutral because honestly that's what sells the quickest and definitely sells pieces that are colorful either sell right away or they sit a while so but either way I needed to paint something fun and colorful and I asked what color it should be many suggestions so I'm going with something fun and funky let me move this back over again because the lighting and these wheels are not cooperating I have these little tiny rolly wheels. My other ones are at the store, so it's hard to see. I know, but I'm going to be painting. I know, of course, the sun. The sun has not been out all morning. It's been cloudy all morning since around 4 o'clock this morning. So I finally decided to get to painting, and the sun wants to pop out right where I'm recording. But I'm grateful for the sun. Be grateful. So I'm just again using, I am using the bristles on this part of the painting because I'm going up and down of the brush. I just was amazed that a lot of people don't know that some of the painting is not just the bristles, it's the side of the brush that you use almost as much. And you can use a chip brush to paint these, and I have in the beginning when I couldn't afford different brushes. I used whatever I had. I've used old toothbrushes to get paint into insets. Use what you have and then if you decide you like this quote hobby and then it becomes a business like we've done, 
um, you just gradually save up and buy new equipment like this brush. I love this mini brush. I this is a newer one. It's my old one. You'll see in a lot of my videos. I talk about how I've used it over 200 times. So, and it works really well. So just like a mechanic, which my brother, our PM Auto, shout out, Tallahassee, Florida. Mechanic, you build up your tools. The better tools you have, the easier and quicker things go. But you can also start out, like my brother did, using what you have and then build up to it. And then once you get to a point, you can decide whether it's worth to invest in a little bit. Because this $40 brush sounds like a lot. But if you go to the dollar store and pay a dollar for a brush, use it 40 times, it's equivalent. And so 40, 40, then you got to throw it away. This I've used over 200 times, so it's actually paid and ended up being much cheaper than a dollar store brush in the long run. I know it's hard to see because I'm doing that back leg and the angle with the sun, but you can kind of see where I'm at. These little wheels. I wish I had my regular wheels, but they're at the store. Is that better? Maybe a little bit better, but not great. Yes, I haven't done the other sides of the um, legs. I will do those as I work my way around the table. Sometimes you'll see, I've said in my other lives, I turn the table upside down on its top and paint the legs with the legs up. So I'll say legs up. It's easier to get the paint on all the different angles of the legs when the legs are up at first. With this piece, I decided I needed to get that top done quicker so it can go ahead and start drying by the time I'm done with the legs. You guys want to know? You want to know <laughs> why I did the top first and couldn't do it legs up, which is so much easier? The true reason? Petey. Petey the cat. Petey likes to sit on top of pieces of furniture that I happen to be painting. He doesn't want anything to do with me until I start painting. Then he wants to be right on the piece right next to me. So Petey is outside right now having his morning excursion, chasing lizards and whatnot. And so I was like, I'm going to go ahead and paint the top. So it'll be dry before PD even gets back in. So yes, I am painting on a time schedule based on PD, the jerk cat. I love him, but he's a jerk. He's a rescue. He's only loving for five minutes a day or when I'm painting. Otherwise he's feisty and biting. You'll see him. Check out my Instagram. You'll see him biting at me, swatting at me. But I love that guy. He brings me joy. Even when he's biting me. If you have a cat, you'll know what I'm talking about. I wasn't planning on having a cat. I prefer dogs. I know, I'm sorry. And I have a dog. But Kitty was a rescue that just ended up being in my life unexpectedly. So, And all of you who post your pictures of your cats being loving and sweet and snuggling and kneading on you and rubbing heads. Yeah, you're lucky. What happened with Petey? <laughs> he was abused before I got him, so he's not so, uh, so, uh, user-friendly. But I love that guy. All right, let's see if I can move this without the wheels jumping off. I'm almost done with that first coat. Again, if you're just hopping on can't control the sun and I am painting in my dining room floor. Let's see if I can. A little bit better view. I am dipping right into the paint. What I mean is I'm dipping right into the jar, right into it. A project like this probably takes about eight ounces of paint. Um, this is a 32 ounce paint jar. So I think we sell the eight ounces for like 
$11.99, something like that at the store. So you can repurpose a piece of furniture for very inexpensive. Give it a different color, put a stencil on it, blend different colors. If you've got leftover paint from other projects, you can mix colors and make custom. Lethal Leap, and I did that with a green, I forget the original green, and just added some white, spooned it in there a little bit at a time into the remaining of the jar until we came up with a really pretty color. And we use that on a uh, piece of furniture that's for sale right now on Facebook Marketplace or go to the other side's Instagram and you'll see she painted uh, stripes on the side of the drawer. Didn't necessarily like the color choice with what we were doing, so we just custom blended it by adding some other colors, including white, until we got to the color we wanted. We mixed it up right in the jar with a plastic spoon left over probably from Chinese takeout. So it's not perfect. The first coat is not perfect. It's just to get the paint on there. Just get it on there. Let it dry. And then we'll come back and do another coat. I'm going to go ahead and do the apron of this side. With the apron, I'm going to be using all parts of the brush because I'm going to do it with the bristles, but to get into this beveled ledge that's right here, there's several really nice beveled ledge here. And then I'm going to, and then up underneath here, you want to make sure the people across the room can see under the table here. So you definitely want to paint under the ledge. And then again, what I was talking about is these insects here because they're decorative. You can see here across the room, so you definitely want to paint those too. If you're not sure, just finish painting, go across, get up, go across the room and see at different angles, levels, what you're seeing. And add paint to cover up what you know you can see. better to go ahead and just paint all of it but there's no need to paint underneath the table that you're never going to see obviously but these little insects believe it or not across the room you're going to see this edge right here and it will drive you crazy that that one part was not painted to do the sides i tend to go back and forth back and forth back and forth when you get spindle legs. You know how some people scream out the word Stella! I go spindles because they drive me crazy. All right, if I move this too much, it's going to pull off that little, okay, I'm not on my rolly thing. I usually have a little rolling cart that I'm sitting on. Can I do this without the whole table falling off these little wheels? I wish I had my um more industrial wheels. They're up at the store because I'm painting a bookshelf up there. Better. Okay, now you're looking at the back of the table. Most people would say, why would you paint the back? Well, in this case, the back might be seen. This piece might be a sofa table, which is what it's originally created as. So you'll see the back of it. I'm also going to maybe use it as a desk, and maybe the desk would be in... A room where you have the desk facing like you're sitting on that side and you're facing the client or the other part of the room it's best to go ahead and paint the back apron as well get this bristle there again I know this looks rough but this is just the first coat it is just to get that paint on there get it drying and then I promise you the second coat will grab onto this first coat and shine. Let me get a little piece of lip. If 
you miss anything, it's okay. The second coat will catch it. I'm trying to show you that it's very forgiving. You can do this, it's very forgiving. Now on the back of the apron, there's not a lot of detailing. By the way, this is not an heirloom piece. This is not a antique. It's from the 70s. It's that faux wood veneer, probably 70s towards the 80s. So there's actually a screw right here holding it together. I'm painting right over the screw. So that's what I'm telling you. If everyone's thinking this was an antique wood piece of furniture, it is not. These were made in mass. You can find them at every shop you go to. You can find them in a lot of homes. They're very functional, very well made, but not wood, so don't freak out. Those of you who don't want wood painted, I agree. If it was wood, I would not have painted it. Now, don't get me wrong. It's made out of wood underneath. That's a real wood board, but it's got veneer on top. I'm just talking about it's not a antique, complete wood. Okay, when you start to do that and, and you get into where you've already painted and it starts to pull the paint off, go ahead and stop. The paint is almost dry. It's drying quickly because of this uh, weather we're having, this heat. And so you just stop and then that part that looks you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. Don't try to fix it. Your second coat will fix that. Now, one thing I did notice, and I don't know if you, you know, you can't see this angle. I'm sitting here. The accent of that seashell on the front comes down about this far and you can see that across the room so I am gonna have to paint the back of that apron on the front on that one part because again across the room that would drive you crazy if you saw that not painted yes you wouldn't be sitting on the floor like this all the time so you wouldn't notice it but if you have children and this is gonna be in the room as a desk it's a double desk actually um, and this desk is in the middle of the room against instead of against the wall you would be able to see that it's better to go ahead and paint it when in doubt so i'm going to take a second to paint it and then you don't have to worry about it you would hate to get done with the whole project and then later on see that one spot and have to go get your paint back out and touch it up which i have done many times but if you can catch it beforehand that's even better oh, you can see i am just painting the back of that leg that I did earlier. Now that I have access to it easier. Does anybody know what day it is? <laughs> Does anybody get to that point right now? Okay, <laughs> that we don't even know what day it is. <laughs> they all blend together. I think it's Wednesday. live we're live is it wednesday yes it is wednesday <laughs> just thought it. oh that's right payday <laughs> i should have that i decided to go ahead while pd was out to get the base coat and then if i don't like this color just you know we're talking about a funky color versus a neutral mm -hmm. i can always go back over this with white if i really 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 hate it oh yeah that's the beauty of painting stuff. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to turn this live off. Because at this point, we're just watching the paint dry. Hope you have a good day. Wednesday, I think it is, officially. The 15th. Oh, it's tax day. Yeah. It is extended tax the day. <laughs> 2020 tax day. 2020. Probably never happen again. Yeah. Usually tax day is April 15th, but it is COVID 2020. So it's now July 15th. And so there you go. Tax day. I should have known what day it was.
was done. But I got mine done sooner than later, thank gosh. One less thing to worry about. So I can be in my happy place with this painting. And Netflixing. And social media. And online classes with Tracy's Fancy and Chris Donna and Brush by Brandy and <laughs> and crime shows. What else am I missing? Walking the dog. All those things that I do. I paint, do those, and then get back to painting after it dries and after I've done some of those things. All right. I said I was going to stop, but I was still touching up. There you go. It's the back again. Sorry about the sun shining in. And if you have any questions, just send them to me or comment below and hopefully I'll see them later. If you have already commented, I haven't seen any comments. I apologize. I decided let's get this paint on there before Petey gets done with his outdoor ventures and comes and jumps up on this. So shop local, the other side vintage at River Square Art Park. Thank you.